Good morning, welcome to Greenland Garden Centre. I'm Jillian and uh, it's a brand new year here at Greenland Garden Centre and we have lots of beautiful things in store, lots of pots, lots of plants and I'm going to show you how to pot them all up and give you some successful tips for growing in your own home. So first things first is we want you to select plants that are going to grow really well in your home so that they're lush and beautiful and they are low maintenance. So when you come to us, have an idea of sort of the lighting conditions and the areas that you want to place the plants. Also you can bring us some pictures and any information you want so we can pick pots that coordinate with your tastes and styles. The most important thing is bringing home things that you're going to love and enjoy in your home. So we are going to help you do that. So when choosing pots, I've done something really neutral here because a lot of people like this sort of really gentle boho kind of style and the creams and the really sort of pastel ter terracotta colors. It lends itself so beautifully to so many homes. Um, the I'm setting it up in sort of a trio-like thing so that when they're placed side by side, each one sort of picks up a different element in the pot and they really complement one another. It is really important also, small plants don't grow larger and healthier in big pots. So we're gonna get rid of that whole myth that if I plant this four inch pot into this plant, that this plant's gonna miraculously turn into something sort of huge and beautiful right away. Nope, nope, nope. Four inch pots want to go into either five inch or a maximum six inch pots so that they develop a really healthy root system that's gonna fill the, fill the pot and the plant and help the foliage to succeed. Same thing goes. So when you've got sort of different sizes of pots, you just wanna make sure that the pot you're transplanting into is only a couple of inches larger, both in depth and in width, in order for the plant to grow. It's kind of like children grow into shoe sizes. It's one size at a time as they grow into life. First of all, growing plants is kind of like science and you're going to find things uh, while you're experimenting that work for you. So in my own home, um, I have plants planted in pots that do not have drainage, um, strictly because I like the decorative value of the pot. So um, the theory is, is you add a layer of pebbles or charcoal or something to the bottom in order to separate the soil and the water that collects in the bottom so that you're not going to create root rot. However, in my mind and experience, if you're going to overwater, that little bit of soil or pebble is not going to prevent the soil from holding and retaining too much moisture. The best thing to do is create a really good, healthy mix that has plenty of aeration in it and really watch your watering. Just do it slowly and gently and thoroughly. Don't drown your poor plant with a big solution of water. So the combination of ingredients that seem to work really well for me and my household is I love the Tropical um, Premium Potting Mix. And what I do is I usually grab a nice big salad bowl and I do a combination and a mixture in the bowl before putting it into my pots. So we're gonna take an entire bag, I think this is a six liter bag, and we're gonna throw it into this large salad bowl. It's a beautiful mix. You could use it just on its own, um, especially if you do have drainage holes and saucers um, so that the water does go thoroughly. But again, in order to aerate the soils to prevent any kind of rot or extra moisture, I like to mix in a few other ingredients. So the next thing I'm gonna add is this beautiful orchiata bark. I wish you guys could feel this combination of things um, through the screen because it's just lovely. And I'm gonna put a big old dump, probably about half a bag in there. And I'm just gonna mix it in.
And then finally, I'm gonna use some of the charcoal. Now often in the bottom of the pots, when they don't have drainage, people will do a layer of charcoal. Um, it's said to sort of neutralize any sort of smell that should happen from stagnant water. In my mind, you should not have stagnant water in the bottom of your pots. Um, so I'm gonna mix some of this in here because it also neutralizes bacteria and prevents it from forming. So it's another healthy ingredient to have in your soil. As well, it does uh, lighten the mixture as well. So in this big bowl, I'm gonna do about half a bag of charcoal as well. And we're just gonna mix it up into this lovely concoction. Okay, now that it's thoroughly tossed about, we've got this beautiful mixture that we're gonna start putting our plants into. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this nice little four inch wire plant and we're gonna put them into this lovely little pot here. Now this pot has a drainage hole luckily. The thing is it doesn't have a matching saucer. So here's where you can get creative with things. I use my great aunt Dot's china dishes. Um, you can find little odds and sods through kitchens areas and of course we do have combinations of saucers around the store to help you with selecting a choice that matches as well. So we're going to fill the pot about one third full of the combination. When selecting a plant, you just want to make sure that it's really healthy, that there's no little things flitting about, and that it has a really well developed root system. And you're just going to kind of squish the pot a little bit and gently get the plant out. We're going to just slightly tickle the sides all the way around so that those little fine hairs now are ready to reach out and grow into their new home. So, and then you're going to just gently play with this. So, that's just about perfect filled one third of the way. We want to make sure that when we're filling in and around the plant, that we want the soil to not go completely to the top of the pot. How this helps is in watering, the water will go down into the soil and into the pot rather than spilling over the edges. So just leave a very, very small gap between the top of the pot and the even surface of the soil. So just center it in the pot and then you're just gonna you can turn the pot and fill in and pat, <coughs> pat down along the sides and you're just gonna create an even surface between the root ball <coughs> and the top of the soil. Ooh. Then I sh usually I have a nice little soapy dishcloth and I wipe the pot down and I water it in really gently and voila, you have a new little friend. So we're gonna repeat the exact same process with each one of these plants, um, nestle them into their new little homes, and then I'll show you the final results and how well they coordinate together. final step is just to sort of water your plants in again slowly gently let's give them a happy little soaking um, and then 
when people say, should I water once a week, etc., etc., I always say you need to check the plants. Um, environments change, so in some homes it may be drier or cooler, which means the plants are going to stay moist longer. So the best thing to do is just check the soil. You can stick your finger in there, go like quite far, and once the soil is thoroughly dry, then you can water it in really well again. Let it thoroughly dry, water it in again, let it thoroughly dry, and water it in again. Greenland is open. We have beautiful pots, wonderful plants. We have expert advice. Uh, so come on in and we'll be happy to help you out. Uh, for any more information, check out our greenlandgarden.com and our website. And if you'd like to see some more beautiful things in my own home, you can follow my own link down below.